just move this a touch. There we go. Uh, it is Tuesday, February 15th. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Uh, it is the Daily Financial News. This is a new show that you can count on seven days a week. Uh, you can even go back and look in our playlist called the Daily Financial News to see what we have been talking about. Uh, the Daily Financial News is something that I've been doing for about 30 years. I've been talking into a camera for about a thousand days. So you can go back and see what's going on. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, share articles, be an active member of the One Rental at a Time family. Before we get started, we've got to congratulate Sydney. Sydney, congratulations for getting your deal. Your card will be going in the mail today. So February 15th, the news of the day. Kind of a good news, bad news story or a good news, we expected it news day. First and foremost, we must talk about Russia. Russia seems to be backing off. They seem to be uh, de-escalating the situation. If you know, if that continues, what will you likely see? First and foremost, you likely will see bond prices fall, interest rates rise. What we saw the last three or four days in the face of amazing inflation was actually a flight to cash, which means. Bonds will go up, rates will go down. That will reverse. If this de-escalates and it's a known big fat nothing burger, you can expect rates to continue higher and higher. But again, let's all hope this is true. Let's hope this has been de-escalated and we don't see any loss of life. Uh, I think we should all count on that. Next up, PPI, producer price index, often called wholesale prices. Hot, hot hot. Came in at 9.7 on an expectation of 9. I don't know what it's going to take for the Fed to do something shocking. The Fed needs to surprise Wall Street. Yesterday, I used the analogy, which you all seem to like, of ripping the Band-Aid off. Right now, Powell and his buddies seem destined to pull your Band-Aid off one excruciating hair at a time, and it is going to be painful and last a lot longer than we want. The pain is going to be bad no matter what. Do you want it short and brief, or do you want it long and excruciating? This is, um, this is not fun to watch. Bullard, certainly the most hawkish, was out talking about getting the 1%. Uh, making an aggressive move. So we we shall see. Uh, I can't believe they are still buying. And thank you for correcting me yesterday. I said, if you're in a hole and you want to stop digging, whatever, I did the analogy wrong in my frustration. If you want to get out of a hole, the first thing is to stop digging. What I said the last couple of days was just off. I don't know why my brain wasn't working, but thank you for the correction. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. Yes, if you want to stop digging a hole, stop digging. Right now, the Fed is continuing to buy mortgage-backed securities. They are artificially lowering the rate that needs to stop. And yes, they need to raise the Fed's fund rate. I've been calling for 50 basis for months now, quarters. We shall see if they have any backbone. Uh, and frankly, and let's just be honest, they need to do it before March. March 10th, I think, is their meeting. They won't. But they need to. There's a. They need. They need to shock. They need to. They need to rip the damn bandaid off. Let's get this thing going. We all know it's going to be bad at this point. Let's go, pal. Stop being weak. He is known as Mister Transitory, and if he wants to dump that reputation, he needs to step up. A couple other things going on. I have a question for you. For you, right there. Yeah, you, right there. Looks like Virgin Atlantic is now taking um, reservations for tickets uh, on their spacecraft or their you know, orbit or whatever they're doing. It costs $450,000, $150,000 down payment. I want to ask you this. If the price was forty five grand, not four hundred and fifty grand, because let's be honest, four hundred and fifty grand, you you've, you've got to be worth what, a hundred million bucks to write that check? Let's just say it was 45 grand. Let's say it's the cost of a new car. Would you write that check today? I'm just curious. Who would write the check? 45 grand. 
not 450 grand, let me know below. I'm just curious. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't get on that thing if they paid me 45 grand. I could not imagine. Oh, that would be so not fun for me. But some of you want to do it. So who's going to write a 45K check? Leave comments below. I would love to hear from you. A couple of other things going on today. Larry Summers is out talking. Larry Summers is basically saying inflation is going to get worse, not better. Larry, I agree with you. Larry is, actually has an interesting point that I need to dig into more. I'm going to give you lots of, lots of numbers, so get ready. He, Larry Summers actually believes the real unemployment rate might be 2%. When he said that, I'm like, this guy's smoking. What, what is he smoking, right? Because 2%. First off, do you know what year had the lowest unemployment rate? Do you know? I didn't. I would not have guessed this year. Yeah. 1953. 1953, the official, uh, I think it's U3, unemployment rate was 2.5%. I had no idea. 2.5%. Larry Summers basically saying if he's right, and we're going to go through some numbers here in a minute, uh, inflation, wage inflation is going to continually spiral out of control, and I have to agree with him. I've been calling for that. Larry is saying that the U3 is not counting people correctly. There's actually more people out of the workforce. So it would look like lower employment or unemployment. He's basically saying three to five million people have left the workforce and thus shouldn't be counted in the equation. Uh, Then he breaks it down, which I thought was interesting. 1.3 million folks have aged out. Think baby boomers. 1.5 million folks have health conditions or are are afraid to work. 1.4 million Uh, We've been restricted because of immigration. 1.3 million early retirements. They have taken equity in their home or stock markets and retired early. Uh, 1 million for other reasons. And then finally, 400K for vaccine mandates. All of these added together, he thinks, will actually bring the unemployment rate to under 2%, which means employers pay up. That's what that means. Pretty crazy stuff. So as I did a couple of months ago, I actually took the CPI number, which was 7.5, and did some math. The reason I did that is rent or rent equivalent was quoted at an embarrassingly low 3.8%. That is so wrong as to not even be comical. First and foremost, rent equivalent is 28% of CPI. It is the largest single metric. So if you can correct that error, you can get closer to true CPI. Well, I did it for you. I took rent equivalent. The lowest that I found was 14.8%. The highest, by the way, was 19.8%. But I took 14.8%. I backed out 3.8%. I put in 14.8%. And now inflation is 10.3%. CPI is not seven and a half, folks. It's 10.3. Double digits. Not good. Powell, see earlier in the video, get off your butt and do something. Don't know if you saw this, but it looks like Warren Buffett has made some serious coin again. Warren Buffett bought just under a billion dollars of Activision. Activision about, I don't know, I forget what it was, four or five months ago was caught up in some pretty serious, um, I guess I'll call it sexual harassment, I think, or basically bad behavior. Stock market got whacked, stock got whacked, and then Warren Buffett bought $960 million, almost a billion dollars. And then lo and behold, Microsoft came in and paid a 20% premium. So good old Warren Buffett has made a bunch of money again. Pretty good stock trader, that guy. A couple of questions I have to think about is, what if we have a decade of rising rates? What if we have a decade of rising rates? You know, slow and steady. Not that we end the year at 5%, but what if we end 2029 at, say, 7.5%? What does that mean? What does it mean for real estate? 
again, I would tell you to go back and look at the 50 year spreadsheet that we've talked about ad nauseum and I give away in my courses. It's pretty interesting because it's not only about rates, it's about wages. What if we have a decade of wage increases? Think about that. That'd be good, right? The employee finally gets theirs. That would be good. But realize that inflation will be part of the decade as well. These are all things that I think about probably more than I should, but these are things that I think about. Some interesting earnings to talk about today. Avis, right? Remember when Hertz was going out of business because nobody was renting cars? Well, Avis folks just made $7.08 a share. Uh, They are seeing increasingly high daily rates for every car they rent. Pretty crazy. Marriott, one of these hotel chains that I used to uh, spend way too many nights in because of work. Uh, They are beat top and bottom, but more importantly said they are seeing increased uh, demand or occupancy. Elon Musk. I think we all need to give a shout out to Elon Musk today. I am not a Musk fan, but it appears that he has given away $5.8 billion. uh, And there is talk about that being roughly $6 billion for world hunger. It is not validated yet. Musk has not said anything, which I think is even cooler. The fact that he didn't brag about cutting that check, good for you. Yes, he uh, and he did this between November 19th and November 29th. He had to do a filing for giving this stock away. That is amazing. Let's just say what it is. He didn't have to do that, uh, but he did. And again, he gave it away quietly. It was only because some people dug into Tesla filings that saw the donation or charity giveaway or whatever you want to call it. So I just want to say, Elon, nice work. UBS has done a survey of the wealthy, uh, high net individuals, and they came back with some very interesting things. High net worth individuals, 61% of them have more than 10% of their portfolio in cash. That is the largest percentage on record for the UBS survey, which they do every year. I'm thinking high net worth is 10 million. I don't remember. I think it was 10 million. Yeah. 62% of high net worth individuals expect inflation to last longer than 12 months. I agree with you. It's going to last years, not months. 56% of high net worth individuals are worried about impact of inflation on cash. However, 41% are pulling a Jamie Dimon and meet Kevin. That's funny to say. Jamie Dimon and Meet Kevin are both doing the same thing. They are waiting for the right investment. They are letting the cash be eaten away by inflation, looking to strike when the opportunity is there. So again, folks, a lot of great stuff going on today. We should all be thankful. It looks like the Russia-Ukraine thing is backing off and de-escalating. That is wonderful. That will have ramifications, though, because rates will go up uh, as bonds sell off as we have this flight to cash when people are scared. That will unwind and mean the 10-year is going up. I actually didn't check, but it would not shock me if it's back over 2%. Remember, like, subscribe, comment, come back every day. We try to do these at 7.30 a.m. if you want to watch it live. And uh, take some fun. Have some fun, okay? Bye.